Welcome to your brain on porn. This presentation is for those of you who are hooked on porn. Only you can decide if you are. I never thought I'd be giving a presentation on internet pornography. Not in a million years. I'm all for free speech and free will. I don't want to ban porn and I don't care what anyone does with their genitals. So what happened? My wife and I have another site on relationships. It has nothing to do with porn, or at least it didn't. However, several articles were there on the neuroscience of sex, orgasm and love, and on evolution and sexuality, and even addiction. So about five years ago, porn users began showing up. I guess they found us through Google. And they began telling their stories, and blogging, and sharing, and more showed up, and more showed up. We learned a lot. Here's a little bit of what we learned. Number one, internet porn is not Playboy. But I bet you already knew this. You know, the centerfold gets old pretty quick. Internet porn is really far more stimulating than just images. It's really due to the endless novelty and the ability to click from one image to another. Another reason internet porn is so stimulating is that one can escalate rather quickly to more kinkier or more shocking material. Number two, addictive personality is not a prerequisite for getting hooked on internet porn. Now the standard model is that you have to have a predisposition. You have to be genetically inclined to get addicted. Well, this is definitely true, but what we found out is that many of the guys who are showing up on the site had never had any other addiction. They were just regular guys who started watching and got hooked. And what's interesting is once they got off of porn, they returned to their, quote, normal selves. Number three, understanding how heavy porn use affects the brain is very helpful to users. And that's why I'm doing this slide presentation, because when you understand how the brain works, it really allows you to steer your ship a lot better when you're trying to get off of porn. And very importantly, it reduces guilt and shame and hopefully reduces one beating up on yourself. Here are the basics. Porn overstimulated your brain and your brain changed. You see, being hooked on porn is due to the same brain changes that occur with all addictions. These brain changes are behind your cravings. These brain changes keep you coming back to porn, even if you want to quit. See, internet porn is what we call a super stimulus. What that means is that it's way beyond what we have ever encountered during our evolution. Here's the big picture. We're a hunter-gatherer brain living in a modern world. Our environment has drastically changed. I suppose I don't need to tell you that. Yet our brains have barely evolved in the last 100,000 years. This means we are not well suited to many aspects of modern life, from living in isolated boxes, to going to work, to working in desk jobs, to worrying about global warming or the economy. We're supposed to be sitting around the campfire, not sitting in front of a computer watching internet porn for hours a day. Here's another example of environment changing and our brains not quite catching up. I haven't seen too many pictures of fat hunter-gatherers, have you? And about 70% of Americans are overweight. So what's going on? Our brains are programmed to love high-calorie foods. That's necessary for survival. In the old days, it was very rare. Maybe honey, sweet fruits, nuts. Today, we have refined carbohydrates and high-fat junk foods. All of these are highly stimulating, so they are super normal stimulation way beyond anything we have ever encountered, just like internet porn. Brain rule number one says you must survive, which means get calories. For food, that means get it while the getting is good, because you don't know when something's going to rot, at least in the old days. So your primitive brain is urging you to binge at every opportunity, to get as much as you can. This leads to overconsumption. This rule also applies to sexual partners. Brain rule number two, making babies. Well, maybe that's brain rule number one. See, evolution's top priority is making more gene packets, more copies of you. Here's a question. 
In the lifetime of a hunter-gatherer, how many potential sexual partners would he or she meet? Not too many, I imagine. How about how many would he have sex with? I'm sure a whole lot less. A heavy porn user would view more hot babes or hot guys or hot whatever in one session than our ancestors would meet in several lifetimes. So this can be considered another super stimulus. Our brains never evolved to handle heavy porn use like this. And unlike junk food, you can never get full. Here's another reason internet porn is so stimulating and so addictive. It takes advantage of an old program located in your primitive brain. This subconscious program is what got you started down the path of using porn. Here's an experiment. It's been done many times. I guess scientists have nothing better to do. What happens when you drop a male rat into a cage with a receptive female? Well, at first, you see a frenzy of copulation. Progressively, the male tires of female number one. She wants more, but he's had enough. He just can't get excited anymore. So what do you do? Well, replace the original female with a fresh one, and the male revives and gallantly struggles to fertilize her. He keeps on going. Here we go again. The male loses interest in female number two. Starting to see a pattern here? Here we go again. This process can be repeated again and again, but with novel partners. Now I'm not sure how many times it can be repeated. Nice picture, huh? So this can be repeated until the male nearly dies of exhaustion. See, this is the genetic program. It has nothing to do with your genitals. It's all happening in the brain. And the purpose of it is to make more babies. but even more importantly, it's to increase the genetic variety of the male's offspring. Here's an interesting graph. As we can see, we have female presentation at the bottom. We have time to ejaculation in minutes on the left side. And we have a rat. Now this rat, in one experiment, had the same female over and over again. And in another experiment, he had different females. How long did it take him to ejaculate? Well, if you look at the same female, it got longer and longer until finally, I guess when they stopped the experiment, it took 18 minutes. Now, a rat only lives two years, so 18 minutes is like four hours in rat time. So that's quite a bit of time. And of course, with different females, he ejaculated quite quickly, which of course means he was very, very excited. If you think about heavy porn users, they often need more novelty just like this rat, to get excited, to get it up, or even to get off. Here's what's going on with the rats. It's called the Coolidge effect. Starts out with declining interest in the present sexual partner. Then, of course, renewed vigor in a novel sexual partner. This is present in all mammals, and it's also present in females. And, of course, we said it's here for genetic variety of the offspring. This is what started you down the road to getting hooked on porn. You see, with porn you're like a lab rat. Your primitive brain urges you to fertilize the two-dimensional females or whatever is on your screen. Here's the question of the day. Why would any straight man cheat on Elizabeth Hurley? Well, it's as simple as old versus new, the Coolidge effect. Now I don't want to pick on guys. It's a common myth that human males are far more promiscuous than human females. But that's not true. If you look back at hunter-gatherer societies, the females are just as promiscuous. And new research that's come out recently has confirmed that women in modern societies are just as promiscuous. So the Coolidge effect applies no matter what, male, female, and it also applies no matter your sexual orientation. So you're happily married or partnered up. You'd say, oh, I'm never going to cheat. Well, either way, the Coolidge effect is still at work in your brain. 
the more rational parts of your brain are saying, no, I'm not going to cheat. But the primitive parts of your brain are saying, whoa, look at that. Or maybe you're fantasizing what it would be like to have sex. Or maybe you're using porn. This is a subtle reminder of the deep programming in your brain, the Coolidge effect, that's there to spread your genes far and wide. Speaking of looking, maybe we are not so unique. Here's some interesting research. Here's the headline. Monkeys pay to see female monkey bottoms. What do they pay with? Well, monkeys love sweets, like fruit juice. So in a study, the male monkeys would give up their fruit juice in order to look at female bottoms. You know, this is a little bit like porn, or maybe it's a lot like porn, monkey porn.